A hallmark of a good software engineer is their ability to problem solve. It's no wonder that in LinkedIn's top 10 most desired skills for 2024, they've listed problem solving. It's all well and good being able to solve countless leak code questions because you've practiced the same sorting algorithm a hundred times and when asked for it, you can immediately offer it. But if you don't know when and where to use these things, then that skill doesn't have much use. So I'm going to cover why you need a system to solve problems how professional Googling is more than just Googling, and the best system that I've found for solving problems, which I use every single day in my job as a software engineer. So what is the problem? I don't know how many people would be able to relate to this, but when I was in school, there was always the acronym RTFQ, read the question. And the reason for that was when it came to exams or courseworks, there's a common issue where people will glance at the question, immediately come up with an idea of the answer and just start writing. That could be 10 minutes of writing or two days. And you get to the end of it and you move on. And then you submit your paper for review and your teacher looks at you and goes, your answer was fantastic, but it wasn't relevant to the question, so you got zero marks. Software tasks aren't any different. It's entirely possible that beginners are either too keen or intermediate people become too comfortable and you just glance at the task, you get to it, and it isn't until you get to pull requests that you realise you've just gone completely off the rails and you've wasted, I mean, in some cases, days, right? Now, back in school, you could probably just get away with a retake, but in the real world, when you're working, this could be the difference between you keeping your job or not. And that's just one step in problem solving. And if we don't build a system for this, you're just going to fall into these bad habits. So our problem here is we need a system for problem solving. So the first thing you'd probably look at is what the cause of the problem is. I think a good way to think about this is the meal planning service HelloFresh. I'm not sponsored by them. I'd love to be. But for a couple of years at university, I had a really eager discount with this company. And essentially what they would do is they would send you all the ingredients and the recipe for food that you needed to make. So there was no thinking at all. You would just have your ingredients didn't even have to weigh them and you'd put them together in the order that it told you cook them for the amount of time that it told you and by the end of it you had a meal all the responsibility for the success of that was not on me it was on them and this was great i mean the meals were fantastic i felt like i was a good cook until the discount ran out and I had to go back to cooking food myself. And so when I went to my local grocery store, I decided what I wanted to make. Suddenly I was confronted with the fact that I didn't know how to organize a meal plan. And after finding a shopping list online and buying some essentials, I couldn't actually bring to mind any recipes that I'd learned because I'd done a different one every day. I didn't have any go-to meals that I knew how to make easily that you'd consider a main. It's very easy to do this with our careers. Somebody else does that specific thing very well, so we just defer to them for the answer. And we never learn it truly for ourselves. Ourselves. Maybe we take shortcuts, we use ChatGPT to write the element in the front end or an algorithm for the back end, and we never look into it as well as we could have or should have. And as a result, when then we're faced with a problem where we have to take a step back, we don't immediately have these solutions pop into our head because we haven't been practicing the fundamentals. We've just been handed solutions and we don't problem solve for ourselves. The cause of not being good at problem solving is not actively trying to do something about it. So what can we do about it? Have you ever noticed that you have that family member or friend who, when confronted with a problem, will immediately assume that it's impossible? Like, oh, how long do you have to cook this chicken for? I've thrown away the wrapper. How do I get this stain out of this shirt? These were problems that our grandparents faced, sure, because, I mean, if nobody in the room immediately had the answer, what would you do? Wait until the library was open or go and find an expert? I don't even know. We don't have that luxury of having the excuse. Every single one of us has a smartphone in our pocket that has access to Google. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, you're the kind of person who does Google things. You don't sit there wondering, oh God, what do I do? There's literally no way around this. You just pull out your phone. How do I get red wine out of a white shirt and immediately you have the answer. Well, what you've got there is a system. Is it the best system? Probably not. Maybe if you've been software engineering for a while, you go to Stack Overflow because you know reliably that the chances are you haven't come up with some novel problem that nobody else has experienced before. But maybe that's not always going to work out. Maybe you have found one of those rare issues that Stack Overflow can't find something relevant to. Well, then maybe you go to a senior software engineer or, or you ask ChatGPT. Your experience is limited to your experience. Even your immediate circle of people at work aren't going to have every answer to every question. So maybe you Google, how do I get good at problem solving? And to be fair, there's a rather familiar system here that shows up. But then also maybe some websites are recommending that you dance, do logic puzzles, get a good night's sleep. I'd agree with that. But that's not as direct as what we want for these purposes. 
The game here is to accumulate more than one solution. We want to be better than the people that just take the, the first top result off of Google, right? We want to actually weigh things up, consider, consider things by taking a step back and actually looking at maybe some outside the box thinking, like maybe there's a book on problem solving that has some deep dive, but I'll find an item that's more relevant to me. Because once you have all of these ideas, that's when you can actually pick what a good solution is. You don't want to be the guy that just reads the first answer of Stack Overflow, because if you implement it and it goes wrong, and in a PR, somebody Googles the problem that you've had that's still going wrong, and they see that your implementation was literally just the first item. They're going to know that you don't have much depth to your problem solving. Once you've got all of the possible solutions, and you've looked outside the box, you just you haven't just looked at the first couple. You've really looked into this and understood it. That's when you can decide upon the best solution. So what is the best solution for problem solving? Well, if you have a look at the format of this video, we've used a system to come to a solution. Okay, so if we're software engineering, solving the problem is, first of all, what is the problem? We're going to read the task carefully and make sure that we're actually solving the thing in the context of what's been asked. Have a look at the user story. Make sure that you actually understand what you're about to look into. If you have any questions, ask the people in your team who wrote the story. Go above and beyond. Ask the architect what he thinks. Oh, look, I haven't looked into this just yet. Did you have any ideas? Then you want to work out what the cause of the problem is. So if this is a bug, we need to be good at debugging. Maybe this isn't something that can be debugged and we need to put logging in, build it, and put it on the relevant machine. Maybe we can debug it and we can step through line by line and find it. Let's have a look at the logs. If there's a video or any evidence of the problem, let's look at that. If it's a task that's expanding something existing, let's do the same thing. Okay, I found the problem in the bug through debugging. I've got an idea of how to fix it. I think if I just change this one line of code. No, don't do that. Find possible solutions. Don't just go with the first one that you think of. Have you ever noticed that when something gets to pull request, a senior will mention some method of completing it that you have never even considered before. If the root of an issue, if the root of the problem that you found is a problem in a parser with a way that some strings are formatted, do a quick bit of reading into the literature of your language on how strings are formatted and how parsers should work. Look at the problem with some understanding behind it. Try and learn something new. If there's somebody on your team who you know is really good with parsers, message them. Also, I'd generically ask ChatGPT. Your prompt should be something like, look, I'm dealing with string formatting. Here's the problem that I have. Here's what I plan on doing to solve it. What other ways could I solve it? And it will give you a list and you'll look through that list and think, that's rubbish, that's rubbish. Oh, hadn't thought of that. I'll try that. Or I've never heard of that. And then you've got an opportunity to add another tool to your problem solving arsenal. And once we feel confident that we've looked at multiple solutions, you're then gonna be able to make the assessment, that's when you implement. And you might work on it and think, oh Christ, this isn't working. Won't matter because you've got a list now <laughs> of other things that you can try. And it's only when you exhaust these solutions that you really need to stick the flag up and say, hey guys, I don't know what to do with this task, I'm really struggling. And your team will appreciate you so much more if you can say, look, here's my systematic approach that I've taken. Here's all the solutions I've tried. I've even looked at things that uh, otherwise I wouldn't have thought of. I've spoken to ex-colleague and he suggested this, that didn't work either. You're going to sound a lot more competent. And the reason you're going to sound that way is because you are more competent. This is problem solving. As a little bonus, sometimes what I like to do is I pull up this website I'm using here, Excaladraw, and I just draw out the classes that are relevant. I'll draw, if it's uh, some front end that's not playing nicely, I'll draw out the page. So if I have it in mind, and then I'll draw out the dependencies on how they all interlink. And then suddenly I've got something to refer back to while I'm going along. I'm not saying that you have to completely document your entire system because you don't want to slow yourself down, but you want a formal process because not every task is going to be completely straightforward. And when you get the ones that catch you out, this is the system that will catch you and protect you. One of the things that will bring your process to a complete grinding halt and prevent you from problem solving is burnout. 70% of software engineers experience it. So I have this video here where I talk through how you can avoid that and give you some actual steps in a similar format to this that will let you get on this problem solving grind and not crash and burn from being too productive. So I hope that video helps. Cheers.